Hello and welcome to Popcorn Mumbles, the podcast where we dig into the back catalog to select a film or television show to rewatch. I'm your host, Cody Nestor. Alongside me is my co-host, Todd Heal. What's going on, guys? Just a reminder, the video version of today's episode is available on YouTube. If you enjoy the show, please consider following us on your podcast platform of choice and subscribing to our YouTube channel. This week, we have chosen the 2005 film, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Based on the beloved tale, this comedic and fantastical film follows young Charlie Bucket, Freddie Highmore, and his grandpa Joe, David Kelly, as they join a small group of contest winners who get to tour the magical and mysterious factory of eccentric candy maker Willy Wonka, played by Johnny Depp. Aided by his diminutive Oompa Loompa workers, played by Deep Roy, Wonka has a hidden motivation for the tour, one that he will reveal only after the children in the group show their true colors. Charlie and the Chocolate Factory was released on July 10th, 2005. On a budget of $150 million, it made $474 million. As a Rotten Tomatoes score of 83% and an audience score of 51%. So, Todd, let's discuss Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Spoilers are ahead. So, Todd, I throw it to you first. Where do you want to start off with Willy Wonka? Uh, this is a movie that I personally had no history with until this week. I watched it for the first time for this pod. Uh I'll consider myself a fan of some, if not quite all, of Tim Burton's movies. So I was kind of interested to see his take on this movie. Uh, you know, basically we're just getting an updated, or we'll say Tim Burton version <laughs> of the classic children's book. I mean, we got the exact same premise, the same beats. You know, we got five kids, we got five going to tickets. Although I will say I do think in this movie that Violet's character, Violet Beauregard, she seemed a little bit different. She kind of had that uh, competition kid trophy driven type of life. Yeah, she's the she's the more um, she's the more unstomachable right. this time <laughs> version of Violet. Yeah, yeah then um, uh, can't even remember her name now. Then Veruca. Veruca. Yeah. Veruca in the original was the one that you just could not stand. In this one, it's more Violet. Yeah, Violet's kind of she's got that mom. It seems like she's kind of driven her into like competitions. That kind of pageant mom vibe, right? She's still got the gum chewing fetish, but you know, yeah. <laughs> right now she's got all that other baggage as well. Yeah, I mean, right off the bat, um, it starts off with just a mess of CGI showing the making of Wonka bars, just right off. Right. <laughs> uh, it just uh, and the CG is bad. It's 2005, but it's still bad. You know, in, to me, in a better film, you you take and you show chocolate bars being like carefully handcrafted and made some way right. by Willie or by the Oompa Loompas. Like you do something with it. It's just like a, it's a terrible CGI opening. It's trying to be like you know Fight Club or something, and it just <laughs> it ain't working. It's not working. And, you know, it's just like you know, it's just. It, I think that's the big thing with this, like. Uh, with this this kind of version, it's like, you know, you see the factory and everything else, and it's just like this almost, like, dystopian-looking, like, right. it's just so flat and, like, dull and heartless, and, like, you see this, like, mass-produced, like, Wonka bars, like, this mass-produced, heartless garbage, and that's what <laughs> this film is. It's mass-produced, <laughs> heartless garbage, Todd. Uh, another thing that immediately turned me off, music by Danny Elfman. I, I've I had a feeling. I just had a feeling. That's <laughs> <laughs> all that man can do. He oh, did some Lord. really great stuff. He did a fantastic Batman 89 theme. He's done a couple good things, but all in all, I don't like Danny Elfman. <laughs> I do not like his music. I knew it. Um, so, yeah, I mean, again, we're, we're covering a lot of the same beats here. Um, we, Charlie, he's still a poor kid. Still a poor kid. He's still got a family of, uh, the dad is a, is a lot, is it, there was no dad in the original, was I there? I think in the original 71 film, they said the father had passed. passed. Yeah. We, this time, Charlie's dad is in the picture. Mm -hmm. He works at the tooth, uh, tooth uh, paste factory. Right. Uh, he steals toothpaste caps. And Charlie makes like a little uh, walk and his factory sculpture out of them. Yeah, out exactly. of toothpaste caps. Exactly. Um, in this one, Grandpa Joe worked for Willy Wonka before in right. the factory. Uh, in the... the, the uh, in the, the story of this film, Wonka shut the doors on the factory to, you know, the workers because of theft, basically. You know, people stealing his secret recipes and making their own competing products. So he pretty much kicked everyone out, right. laid everyone off, and, uh, you know, kind of shut the, the doors. Uh, I I bet you, though, Todd, he laid everybody off because they tried to unionize. <laughs> Whoa. Okay. That's my guess. That's folks. Cody's hot take. That's that's my guess. If folks. you're out there across the country or in a union or support unions, 
A. Yeah, it's move uh, it on. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's just, the first time we see Johnny Depp as Willy Wonka. I was immediately like, no, really, this, yeah. This take, no. It just, I, it's. I, we'll get into it more, I'm sure, as we go. But Grandpa Joe gives us a little flashback of his time at the Wonka factory, and the first time you even see Johnny Depp and his take, no. Nah. Right. I was immediately right. like, no. We see a little uh, flashback. He made uh, some prints somewhere. A palace made of chocolate. Gets our sun starts coming out. Place starts melting. Yeah, there's a lot more fantastical elements of this film, which right. we'll talk about later on as well. Um, what did you What did you make of that slanted uh, bucket house? I was getting ready to say actually that Tim Burton esque uh, kind of look like a Nightmare Before Christmas type structure, a bucket house. Yeah, Charlie actually sleeps up in the top of that thing. Uh, there's a big hole in the roof right above his bed. I was gonna say, is is it a hole or is it supposed to be like? I, I, I thought there was a hole. I was like, is there supposed to be? Glass or a window there, but I don't think so. It just I looks like just a friggin the, hole. the poor boy is exposed to the friggin' winter elements. T- t- right there, yeah. Has he not dead in this movie? <laughs> <laughs> um, in the film, it's Charlie's birthday soon. It's set up. Obviously, uh, if you know the story here, uh, Wonka has decided to uh, put five golden tickets into Wonka chocolate bars and send them out all around the world to invite uh, five children to the factory for unknown reasons at first um and like i said thank goodness it's charlie's birthday so he can get his yearly chocolate bar but no 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 ticket uh in this one though uh he eventually outside of uh i don't know i'm not exactly sure where he is he finds a uh almost frozen ten dollar bill on the ground uh, as well. Also in this, uh, do, do you want to get into Grandpa Joe at all in this one, Todd? I know you had a very strong opinion oh, last yeah. week about... The OG Grandpa Joe. Yes. Uh, I had a big rant. Uh, I don't really have a problem with this Grandpa Joe. This he It's really not... Uh, his uh, his bedriddenness and unwilling to work and help his family <laughs> isn't really gone into in this one. Yeah, it kind of glossed over in a way. Right. They kind of make him... They try to make him more sympathetic, I think. They kind of know, I think, a little bit about how people people felt about felt about the original grandpa. Exactly. Jack. I mean, at least in this one, he's got a living father that's working at a toothpaste factory, and I'm assuming his mom is still doing those clothes. Exactly. Yeah. So the I can see a little bit that, some that, money, a little bit of money's right, rolling the in. Right. The grandparents don't necessarily, you know, they maybe it's a little bit more acceptable that they're kind of bedridden all together, I guess. Until it's, his dad loses his job. True, true. <laughs> we see Grandpa uh, Joe did squirrel away some money. He's got his little yeah. his little squirrel away sack. Um, the other grandparents we get a little a lot more dialogue from. Uh, I think it's un- uh, Grandpa George and Georgina. Right. Uh, we get a lot more. Uh, Grandpa George is uh, pretty sassy. He's a little sassy <laughs> fella. He's, He's got a lot. Sassy fella. He got a lot to run his mouth about. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we get, we get a lot more dialogue in 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 uh, in this. But of course. Uh, same same uh, rules apply as before. Uh, our, our children, let, let's go through them again. So what did you think about Augustus in this one, Todd? Augustus Gloop is one of our uh, our golden ticket finders. Uh, I mean, basically just an updated version of the original Augustus Gloop. I mean, he's a lot just more the, gluttony. The kid, a lot more gluttony, maybe just a kid that loves to eat, just that, constantly shoving in chocolate exactly. in his face. That Augustus is going to lose a foot. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. Uh, Veruca, we talked about her. She's more creepy. She got that little creepy girl vibe going yeah, on. She's not quite as annoying as the original Veruca. And, and then there's po- points in it that she was kind of nice. Like when yeah. she first meets Willy Wonka, she's like, hi, sir, you know, yeah. whatever, nice to meet you or right. something like that. Like, where's the other Veruca? It's like, I want, fuck you, Willy. <laughs> Give me this factory. I want it, Daddy. And I want it now. Give it to me. Yeah, but yeah, Veruca takes a back seat to Violet, who is just. Is Violet's like, really. She's yeah. gross. Yeah. <laughs> just, <laughs> she's gross. She, she's the new Veruca. <laughs> she's, it's, like I said, she, her and her mom has this very pageant mom vibe where right. it's like, Everything has to be perfect. You're a winner. You're the best at everything. You know, my daughter is like better than you, that kind of stuff. She's kind of hyping her up before she goes in there, like, you know, you got what you got to do, how you got to do to win this thing. Exactly. Like manipulate people, play the game kind of stuff. Uh, Mike TV here really annoyed the fuck out of me. In that this. was an annoying kid, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, the actor he does a great job playing a, a little shit of a kid. He's ass. You see him, he's like playing uh, like an FPS, like a first person shooter. On look, looks yeah. like a half ass Atari. Right. <laughs> um, yeah, he's like in this one. He's now kind of like a. Um, Instead of just being a kid who's obsessed with TV, he's like a like a tech nerd. Oh yeah. Who drops the R word. 
You notice that? <laughs> right, right. Uh, yeah, it's just a little bit. He gets more characterization. I'm not saying that it's good, though. It's just he's a lot more obnoxious in this and very, very yeah. snotty. He figures out some kind of sequence or something to figure out how exactly where to get that one Wonka bar. Didn't he say he just bought one? Yes, he bought yeah. like one bar because he cracked the code cracked and cracked the, the system and figured out how to find it, basically. Yeah. Basically cheated the system. Um, Charlie's dad eventually ends up getting fired from his job at the, tooth, uh, the toothpaste factory. Uh, they to, they say to a robot workforce, but probably because he was stealing. Yeah, he was stealing, <laughs> stealing toothpaste caps. Yeah, I mean, get your ass cap. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, like I said, we Charlie finds ten dollars. Um, we see at the uh, at the candy shop when he when he when he buys the the Wonka bar that eventually has the golden ticket. Some of the adults around is like, I'll give you twenty dollars for that. One lady's like, I'll give you five hundred. I'm like, here, oh, yeah. lady, take it. Yeah, fuck the factory. You want to go? <laughs> exactly. Like, fuck this creepy factory I'm about to visit. Um. But let, let, let's get into the, the actual tour. So, like, when, when the kids and the parents get there, a lot less fanfare, seemingly, than there was with the original. Uh, you know, like, it seemed like it's It just, seemed like it was kind of more pageantry. You know, there was some music playing or something at right. the original one. It's just kind of they're standing there at the gate waiting. Yeah, and then, like, <laughs> the, the, the kids and the parents go through the front gate. And at first, I thought Willy Wonka was going to pull, like, a squid game. It's like it's just like a very open, like desolate courtyard. Right. And I was like, were well, they gonna play stop and go? And some kid gets shot in the chest, like Squid Game. Yeah. Like I don't know what was going on there. And then we see like this, like uh, you know, uh, Freddy Fazbear, Chuck E. Cheese animatronics oh, out yeah. there with that song. Yeah, Willy Wonka, Willy Wonka, Wonka. as her face is melted away. <laughs> Willy Wonka. Yeah, <laughs> they end up catching. They melt down and they catch on fire and. Uh, we get our first proper introduction, not via flashback of, of Willy Wonka, as he says a line that I never knew what it was from, but it always annoyed the fuck out of me. That good morning, Starshine. The Earth says hello. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I hate it. I hate it. I've heard that so much on TikTok, and I never knew what it was from, and now I now do. you know, huh? Ah, uh, yes, I hate it even more. But, uh, yeah, I mean, th th there's a scene, that first scene where Johnny Depp and the, the group in the entryway, it's just it's, it's awful. <laughs> it's like it's so cringe. And I know it's like part of it is intended to be cringe in the context of the film, but it ends up being like unintentionally cringe. cringe. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a student film, Todd. It really feels <laughs> like somebody's fucking cousin made this. Right, right. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I have no idea what Johnny Depp was going for here. Like, I have really no idea. Like... He just kind of goes around with some almost like this glossed over look on his face with that with that permanent smile. Almost, of course, we figure out why later why he's almost got that permanent smile always. Yeah, on his exactly. Face. <laughs> I mean, and he's. I think I have some notes about like maybe what his inspiration was, but like, you know, I think he said something about like maybe old game show hosts and a little bit of Fred Rogers. To me, it's like there's a little bit of like Michael Jackson in there, right? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I think people have made that comparison before, but I, I just I really don't know what. What I mean, I think Johnny Depp. Um, I've always been a fan of his. He's, oh, he's yeah, done definitely. some great stuff. Um, I just think whatever he had in mind for the take you was just was not right for the character. It was, it was kind of off. You're Very never off. going to top Gene Wilder anyway, right? So I guess you figure why not go crazy with it? Make but it like, my own somehow. This but... is it just you chose poorly here, Johnny. Yeah. I'm sorry to say. Um, we we get the 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 kids go into the 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 room of candy I guess the big with the, the chocolate waterfall and stuff and I'm just like this place looks like a fucking swamp. <laughs> <laughs> this is not this is not enjoyable. Right. And he's like, oh, why don't you eat the grass? I mean, all this grass we've been walking on. Sure. Yeah. Let's take a chomp on that. Exactly. Um, Oompa Loompa's time. Talk about the Oompa Loompa. Uh, or the Oompa Loompa. The Oompa Loompa just but, magnified. Or, yeah. Uh, it's one guy. Uh, apparently motion captured multiple performances, but it's like one Oompa Loompa, but it's the same dude. I mean, they're okay, I guess. I mean, I prefer the originals, but I mean, I just, I don't know. It just seemed kind of weird. The whole movie just seemed kind of exactly. weird, but I mean, maybe it's, that's, it's, it's Tim, a Tim Burton movie, It's Tim Burton, but like, I just don't understand that choice. Like, so one thing, I don't I don't think we talked about it last week and when we talked about Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Like, is it, is it possible in the first one that the, you know, we kind of talked about, we did talk about a little bit, like, you know, maybe some of the, in the original, you could kind of 
say perhaps some of the stuff in the factory was put on for the tour. Right. Like dressed up a little bit. Right. And, and the first one I was thinking about, is it possible that the Oompa Loompas in the first film were just like, you know, little people that Wonka had dressed up just for the tour? Yeah. You know what I mean? In this one, it's like there's a whole, like not, that that's not possible. They have like, in this, they have like exaggerated proportions and like we see a flashback in, of Wonka in like Loompa Land. Where he actually meets them and recruits them to come back and work in his factory. And they're just like, it's another. For cocoa beans. It's another CGI nightmare little right. environment. And, you know, he's telling the story of how he convinced them to come live in his factory. Basically, he says, like, come be my slave labor and I'll pay you in, in chocolate because you're too dumb and primitive to understand or know any better. Shake, shake. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, and then as they're singing, you know, uh, the parents and some of the kids start coming in like, you know, that's kind of oddly specific. They just burst into that song with those with his name already and right, the exactly. consequences of what happened to exactly, him. Exactly, exactly, <laughs> yeah. It's just all, uh, speaking of music, all the music sucks. All yeah. the musical numbers suck. And I was going to say something, too, about the Oompa Loompa songs. Half the time, I couldn't understand what they were singing or saying. I think I read something that said Danny Elfman, like, dubbed them. Well, a, well <laughs> not just uh, he dubbed over, like, the voices. Like, he was the Oompa Loompa voices just dubbing himself over and over again. Terrible. And I believe I read that the actual their songs were actual dialogue lifted from the book. I think so, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but it just doesn't work. They're all terrible. None of them are catchy. None of them are memorable. They're just a bunch of gobbledygook you can barely hear. And they were supposedly like representing different musical eras, I think I read somewhere. But I don't know. It's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the thing about having the, the same guy being the Oompa Loompas, I was thinking about it. I was like, why, why didn't you just get like four or five like pretty well-known celebrities right. to like play your main like Oompa Loompas that you see on camera mostly. Just have the rest of them kind of like off screen yeah, and like working in the background. Like, you know, and you can have it like, oh, isn't it funny? Tom Hanks is Oompa Loompa. Right. You know right. what I mean? Like something like that to make it more interesting. Like that, uh, it's just the one guy and it's nothing interesting about him. He's got, I guess, a kind of interesting look about him. Yeah. But nothing's done with it. Right. It's not funny. The musical stuff is not well done. So, like, I, I don't understand. I just thought it would be better. Like, get, get three or four known celebrities. I'm like, hey, look, it's, it's like I said, Tom Hanks or <laughs> Brad Pitt. He's an Oompa Loompa. He's Oompa Loompa. It's, it's, you know, like, you know, right. I mean, something like that. It's Kathleen Turner. <laughs> <laughs> As Oompa Loompa. She's still relevant, right? Right there. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but, uh, I mean, any conversation that, that Wonka has with a, with a child in this film makes me want to kill myself. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> wow. Just, uh, tell us about Wilbur Wonka, Todd. Uh, that was Willie's father. Yes, played, played by Christopher Lee. The great oh, Christopher Lee, great yeah, Christopher who Lee. was slumming in this film. Let me tell you. <laughs> so he's a uh, over-the-top dentist. Uh, he's got some kind of like I don't know if that's a, a mouth prizer opener, a teeth straightener. I mean, it's like yeah, it's a, it's like oversized braces. Like I right. read that um, that was. Not part of the original book. That was something that uh, Tim Burton lifted from his own life. I guess he right. had some type of contraption uh, like that. That device was haunting. Yeah. But uh, we kind of see uh, Willie out, a young Willie out, uh, trick or treating, and he takes his candy bucket back to his father, and his father's like, you know, this will get stuck in your braces. You know, you think you're going to eat this? And uh, people are allergic to chocolate. Yeah, he basically just dumps the entire candy bucket into the fire, and. Uh, you know, poor Willie. He had really, he really had no family life, which is why he, he ran away from home. Right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah. I mean, uh, I don't. I don't know if the father backstory and all that. I don't think that's part of the original book. I could be wrong, but if it is or isn't, it doesn't work in the film. It's not needed. You didn't need it in the original seventy-one. I don't think it adds much here. Yeah, and it's kind of already walking the line on something we may run into later on this month when we watch the actual Wonka prequel. Mm -hmm. But, you know, do we need to know Willy Wonka's backstory? That's, that's kind the, of an ambiguous... You that's don't the really best part about Willy right. Wonka. You don't know quite where he's coming from. Exactly. And, like, again, it's the Darth Vader problem. Exactly. The more yeah. you know about it, the, the, the worse it could possibly turn right. out to be. Right. So, exactly. Um, there's just stupid little stuff in here, like the whipped cream gag. Do you remember that? Where there's just like Oompa Loompas physically whipping, whipping a, a cow. cow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Funny stuff, Tim. <laughs> Funny stuff. Like, ugh. Uh, the boat ride in this is 
awful. It's like the it's a Disney theme park ride in a CG hail. Right. That's right. all it is. It's not interesting. Like the first one is like you're left like, what the hell what is, is this? this? Like, yeah. is this dude crazy? And this is just a big CGI, just just nothing. Right. It's right. just it, it's terrible. I mean, it like. I don't. I don't know what they were going for in this film. I, I, they really thought they were doing something, Otai. They really thought they were doing something. <laughs> they were going for something. Yeah, they just don't know what. It's yet. just there's not an ounce of like. I think Tim Burton is a very creative guy. Mm-hmm. I think he's done some fantastic work um, within the big studio stuff and some of his own individual projects. But like, there's not one ounce of creativity in this film. It's a, it's like it's, it's as soulless and hollow as that fucking factory in this film. I was just getting ready to say, I think the major thing this thing is missing is heart. Yeah. It's just very sterile. It's very cold. Exactly. Exactly. And that, that's that's absolutely the biggest problem. And there's just a lot of lazy filmmaking. And there's a lot of like, you did this practical, but you didn't do this practical. You decided to like turn this into like some kind of CGI monstrosity. Like it just feels like a lot of lazy filmmaking. Right. Honestly. Right. And like I said, every musical number sucks. There's no creativity there. I just, I mean, if I had kids, I wouldn't show this to my kids. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't you show it. no child through I wouldn't, that. Sh- I wouldn't show this to humans. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, well, uh, bold statements this morning, yeah, folks. We learned later that Willy Wonka has the ability to perfectly mimic another human's voice. Did you, did you catch that? I did catch that. Yeah. Wow. Mm-mm-mm. Um, the, uh, the, 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 the nut cracking squirrel scene. So in the original, it's a, it's, Egg laying gooses, right? That like sort out good eggs and bad eggs. In this, it's uh, nut cracking squirrels. Um, apparently, in that scene, again, this is one of those things like he did this practical. They trained 40 actual squirrels for that scene, and like it's just again, I don't know. It to me, what, what did you make of the scene? Did, did you find it interesting at all? I, I just noticed it was different from the original because, you know, we went from the golden eggs and Veruca being a bad egg to mm-hmm. now she's being in a, a bad nut. Yeah, <laughs> and she's dropped in, they're dropped into like the trash bin or whatever and like it's still some of the stuff about, oh, we turn on the furnace on Tuesdays and, you know. And I read somewhere that uh, one of those, one of the real squirrels in that scene, they, they didn't use actual nuts. They used something else, and they tried something. And one of the real squirrels kept eating the shit. <laughs> they tried something else. One of the real squirrels kept eating the shit. So they finally had to use like a, a metal, a metal nut. So he wouldn't eat it. Jesus Christ! <laughs> <laughs> oh God! It's like in the first film, you could kind of believe that this like eccentric man had this like factory set up and. You know, it, it was either on purpose or maybe for the purpose of the tour, but like not not in this film. Like you just, right. it, it's it's like its own thing, and you don't you don't feel like it at all. And like, um, you know, that Wonka Vader tour, like that uh, that tour possibly could kill just outright. <laughs> like you know, <laughs> right? Uh, I mean, that whole thing just like that that Wonka Vader tour kills the any idea that 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 the factory is just kind of a setup kind yeah. of stuff because it's like some very outlandish stuff you get like a whole mountain range and like underground tunnels and yeah. like I, it's a lot of fantastical Tim Burtony stuff but it's not needed it it's it's that it's it's that substance like or the style of no substance, substance yeah. is exactly what it is um <laughs> it, you mentioned before Wonka leaves home and a boy. I had uh, as a boy. I have a note here uh, when he, the scene where he leaves home as a boy. I was hoping Christopher Lee would pull out his bent dick lightsaber and cut him in half. <laughs> <sighs> uh, one little gag that I actually chuckled at is when he actually leaves home and you see him walking past all those flags and he's like, "Oh, look at all these countries he's visiting." And he's as you see, this like his security guard. And it's like his sign that says, you know, he's in a museum or something. It's like mm-hmm. flags of the world. And that guy's like, hey, kid, we're getting ready to close. <laughs> you know, he was just walking through a museum. Right. He wasn't going nowhere. I actually chuckled there. Nice. I'll be honest. <laughs> I, I did not. <laughs> um, the uh, the TV room scene, you know, in the original we had Mike TV and TV room scene. Uh, how fucking dare they? Show footage from 2001 of Space <laughs> Right, House. right. You don't deserve to even have that footage in this fucking field. I was actually surprised that that was actually still just like, you know, they're doing like a TV transmission. 
Right. You would think in 2005 they would do, you know, maybe something a little more high tech. Right. But, you know, I guess in staying with the original Just call novel, it a teleporter or something? Yeah, yeah. Right. But, you know, I guess in staying with the original book, they kept, I you know. so. And then it just the rest of that scene and, like, some of the scenes after, like, the it's just the film is, like, so awkwardly paced. And the dialogue is, like, it's always, like, this jilted dialogue. It's always like just so awkwardly executed. Like, right. I, it's just I don't I don't even know how to like really describe it. Again, we said there's no heart to it, and it feels like it. And then none of the characters feel like they have motivation. It doesn't really even feel like Will, you know Willy Wonka is testing the kids. It yeah. just feels like the things are happening to them. Right. It doesn't feel like you know it's any kind of a test like it was in the original at, at all. And uh, <laughs> uh, we see. Um, Wonka visit Charlie's house and and they they already have so little and he decides to crash through the roof anyway with with the Wonka <laughs> busting baited. through their house exactly we see like in uh we see that uh the reason that Wonka started the the the, the golden ticket contest he finds a, a gray hair and I guess has a midlife crisis of some right, sort right. and decides to give his whole whole empire away and he wants to know who's going to keep his slaves making chocolate when he's dead. <laughs> is basically his motivation That's in here. a nutshell there. Exactly. Uh, he ends up trying to make Charlie. And Charlie, of course, is our winner after all the other children are murdered or sent out of the factory, whatever you, you have. You actually see them walking out of the factory you do. in this one. You do, yeah. compared to the original. Right. Um, but Wonka tries to make Charlie choose between taking over the factory and his fortune and everything or his family. Charlie doesn't obviously doesn't go for that and chooses to stay with his family. And Wonka's like, fine, I'll leave. And, you know, I'll, I'll leave your family to freeze to death with this, <laughs> another big ass big ass hole, hole I'll put in your house. Exactly. In your roof here. Um, but then we see Charlie, he eventually, uh, Wonka comes and finds him again, has like a little change of heart. Uh, and, uh, Charlie helps him kind of sort out his daddy issues. Kind of like, have a little reconciliation there. Exactly, exactly. And we go, he goes back and finds Christopher Lee, and they have, like I said, reconciliation. And Wonka gets his his kind of, uh, I guess, catharsis and happy ending with his father. And yeah. then we see Charlie and Wonka back at the the bucket house. They've they're having now a big family feast. Doesn't the dad have his job back or some other job somewhere? I think so. Um, and the kind of the dialogue they're having, you kind of get the the notion that you know Charlie and Walker are kind of partners now in the fact. Yeah, because uh, uh, Charlie's like, "What about but, uh, blueberry kites with licorice string?" And I'm like, "How about a licorice fucking noose <laughs> for me right now?" <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> uh, but uh, Charlie, at the end of it, Charlie got his chocolate factory, and Wonka got a family. Got a family. Happy ending. Everyone lives happily ever after. Except me, because I had to watch this. <laughs> uh, I got some chocolate bits for you here, Todd. Uh, okay. Uh, I think you got some stuff too. We'll, we'll kind of go back and forth here. Okay. Nestle provided eighteen hundred and fifty bars of real chocolate for the film. Nice. Uh, I also have another one here. I'll follow that up with Willy Wonka's colorful cane is filled with Nerds candy sold under the Willy Wonka brand. Ah. What you got? Mine was a uh, little Easter egg things. I'll start, and if I, you can jump back in if you got a different one. Uh, in the Halloween flashback, kids run past the screen dressed as Nightmare Before Christmas characters, Lock, Shock, and Barrel. I oh, didn't catch that. Okay. Uh, apparently, in the pink sheep shearing scene that Wonka doesn't want to talk about, as you know, they're going by the Wonka Vader, mm -hmm. and uh, they kind of pass those pink sheep getting sheared. Uh, that's a callback to the movie Ed Wood. I don't know. I love what. Ed Wood. <laughs> I love Ed Wood. Yeah, I know okay. what you're talking about now. Yes. Okay. You have to be double jointed and Hungarian, Todd. <laughs> I know you don't get that reference, but we Ed actually Wood. get a Batman reference in this movie. Smile X. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I have that in mind. Yes. Okay. Uh, let me find it here. Charlie's ahead. father works at a toothpaste factory, as we mentioned, which produces Smile X toothpaste. Smile X was also the name of the poisonous gas concocted by the Joker in Batman '89, also directed by Tim Burton. Um, I'll give you a couple of mine here. Screenwriter John August had uh, had never even seen Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory when asked by Tim Burton to write the script. After finishing the screenplay, he finally watched the 1971 version, only to be surprised at how much darker the family movie was compared to his own. I hope you're all surprised how much fucking better it is <laughs> compared to his own. <laughs> As I kind of mentioned a little bit before, Johnny Depp used game show host and children's television hosts such as Fred Rogers as his inspiration for his performance as Willy Wonka. He also said in interviews that Willy Wonka would be part Howard Hughes reclusive, part 1970s glamorous rock star. 
Mm. I didn't really get that vibe. Or <laughs> Johnny Depp stated that he had based his appearance on the costumes uh, on the costumes on a Marilyn Manson's album, "The Golden Age of Grotesque." Right. Perfect for kid friendly family movie, right? <laughs> right. Let's base our costumes on Marilyn Manson. Exactly. Uh, you got anything else over there? Uh, apparently, uh, and something I'd never noticed before, but when I think of back on Tim Burton movies, it kind of makes sense. He loves black and white stripes in his films. Yes. And uh, a couple instances I wrote down where it shows up in this particular film, uh, Grandpa Joe's apron when he's working for Wonka has that kind of pattern. Mm-hmm. And it's one of those Oompa Loompa numbers where they have black and white sleeves. Yes, I know what you mean, yes. And the narrator of this movie I had actually a note about, it was the late Jeffrey Holder. He was a dancer, choreographer, and actor. Do you know where we know him from, Cody? Jeffrey Holder. Not right off, no. Okay. Uh, Jeffrey Holder, probably besides being a dancer, choreographer, and actor, is best known to me and Cody and maybe some of our listeners as Baron Samidi in the film, Bond film, Live and Let Die. Okay. I you know the ha <laughs> guy. Uh, Flakes and Blows Up or the other guy? The, the guy on the back of the train? Yeah, you know. the Oh, the voodoo his, mask? Yeah, the voodoo, voodoo mask. paint guy? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah that guy. Yeah. All right, okay. That was the late Jeffrey Holder. He Jeffrey was the narrator Holder. of this film. I did not know yeah. that. Um, to his surprise, Deep Roy, who played every Loompa Loompa, uh, repeating the same movements uh, several hundred times, while these were then put together digitally, each Oompa Loompa represents a separate performance by Roy. In recognition, Roy's salary was raised to one million dollars. Wow. Uh, let's see what else I got here. Uh, in early 2003, Gregory Peck was offered the role of Grandpa Joe. He told Warner Brothers he would consider it, but he passed away before he could give them an answer. Peck's family has said in interviews that he only hesitated because he didn't want to seem desperate and take a significant pay cut uh, and was looking forward to playing Grandpa Joe. It's for the best. Probably for the it's best. It's for the best, it's for Gregory, the best, and Gregory. his family, that you were not involved with this production. Uh, two more here for me. This movie was one of the many projects that was produced by Plan B Productions, the production company that Brad Pitt and Jennifer Aniston formed during their marriage. It was the last production produced before they filed for divorce. Oh. Coincidence? <laughs> and my last one here, Todd, the last Warner Brothers movie to be released on VHS. Oh, shit. It really? also killed VHS. Wow. <laughs> it, killed, it killed Brad and Jen, and it killed VHS. This movie is geist. Uh Anything else you got before we move on to reviews? The only other thing I had was uh, apparently this movie was supposed to be a lot closer to the actual source material of the book than actually the 1971 film was. That's Couldn't tell you, but if it is, it's worse. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we rank uh, films on a 1 to 10 scale. Starting from 1, the ranks are Torture, 2, Awful, 3, Bad, 4, Sapar, 5, Mediocre, 6, Decent, 7, Good, 8, Great, 9, Amazing, 10, Masterpiece. Todd, give us any final thoughts you'd like and your review score for Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Uh, Why well, I actually didn't just out and out hate this movie, there wasn't a lot I really loved here either. Uh, you know, I couldn't help but notice that this film had a 51% audience score, and I can see that. A uh, large collection of people like myself who grew up with the original and just don't find much here to supplant, supplant that or, ma- or better it anyway. And then I see another portion who are probably much younger without those attachments that enjoyed this more. Not necessarily modern, but I guess more unique take. Uh, to me, in the end, there wasn't a lot here that captured my imagination at all. I give Charlie and the Chocolate Factory six Wonka bars, which is decent. Gotcha. Um, I had more visceral reaction, I would say, <laughs> to this. I'm a little bit more subdued. I really think it, I, I don't know, I think it really was kind of a soulless kind of film. It did not have any heart. Again, I the first time I'd seen the 1971 original was last week when we covered it for Popcorn Mumbles. I gave it a seven. I really enjoyed it. I didn't. I didn't immediately see the instant classicness of it. Right. Compared to this, though, it's a 10. <laughs> but uh, I, I just, for me, I, I, I've honestly went back and forth, and I'm sitting here going back and forth now on, on, on the rating for this. Um, there is a couple of little unique things about this, and maybe it does fall a little bit more closely to, to the original source material, and maybe that's a positive thing for some. Right. And maybe some of the other people prefer the the style that you get here. Um, but it lacked a lot of substance for me. And substance to me is more important than the style of a film. I'm going to stick here, and I'm going to give Charlie and the Chocolate Factory a 4 out of 10, which ranks it as a par. 
Uh, originally, I was going to say a three, which ranks it as bad, but I'm going to stick with four and rank it as subpar. Okay. Todd, tell everyone how they can find us and stay up to date with us on social media. We're at Tau Capes on YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram. Tau Capes Podcast on Facebook. You can also email us at TauCapesPod at gmail.com. Also, if you're so obliged, leave us a five-star review on your podcast app of choice. It really helps the show. Popcorn Moments will return next week. We want to thank you so much for listening. Until next time, bye, guys. See you, guys.